listener, and welcome to Book 3, Chapter 11 of Bite Size Tales, the audio flash fiction podcast. In this week's story, you'll come to find that things are not always as they seem, even looking from the outside in. Inside Written and read by Dot Moore Session 2311-R Subject, Elise Wilson Location, Classified Trial, Classified Trial Duration, TBD The subject of this experiment is not to be disclosed to any current or future participants. Refusal to comply on any grounds will result in immediate termination of both the subject and the moderator. Under no circumstances will the events that transpire within the testing locations as a result of the subject's interaction be published before the completion of any other existing or future trials in accordance to the schedule as of... (sighs) What? What? Where? Where am I? I blinked up at the harsh glow of the fluorescent lights in the ceiling. As my eyes adjusted to the stark white of the bulb beaming down at me, I began to sit up. My head was swimming and that only made sitting up all the more dizzying. There was very little to look at as I glanced around the room I was in. Gray, tightly patterned carpet and off-white paneled walls surrounded me. A single chair sat in the center of the room facing the corner and at both far ends of the room were open entrances to hallways. I moved to get my feet under me and stood slowly. I'm still in my clothes from this morning. There's a small bandage at the crease of my elbow, but the tape has started to peel away at the edges. How long have I been here? What is this place? How did I get here? I paused before the panic started to settle in. Elise, what's the last thing you remember? Steadying myself, I took a few slow, deep breaths. I went to work this morning met Kendra for a quick coffee after the 10 a.m. meeting, then back to work. I recall getting back to the office, but then it's a blur. Shit. What am I doing here? Hello? Hello? Is anyone there? No answer. Can anyone hear me? Hello? I could hear the fear starting to layer itself into my voice. Clearly, I needed to find my own way out, but out of where? I walked toward the hallway at the further side of the room from me. That's where I heard it first, a whisper, a crackle of sound. I stopped dead in step. Who's there? Hello? Can you hear me? Please, I need to get out of here. Silence. I stepped forward, and again, the same sound I heard only a moment ago. I shouted, stop messing with me. This isn't funny. Who are you? Why am I here? The static sound continued, and for the briefest of moments, I thought I heard breathing. Then silence followed. That's it. I'm getting the hell out of here. I'll find my own way. As I approached my hallway destination, the static popped a third time, and a faint feminine voice with it whispered. No, not that way. I looked up and around for the origination of the voice and found several small, round speakers embedded in the ceiling tiles. Hello? Can can you hear me? Do you know how I got here? How, How do I get out? Please, please help me. Silence. No, 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 please, please don't go. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm not sure what's going on or how I got here. Please, I just want to go home. Still, silence. My shoulders sagged as my eyes closed and tears fell in ribbons down my cheek. Please, I don't know why I'm here or what I'm supposed to do. I just want to leave and get back to my mundane life. Please, just help me. The speakers crackled to life again. I'm not supposed to help you. I could get in trouble. It could ruin everything. I couldn't hide the desperation in my voice. That's that's okay. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you look like. So I wouldn't be able to get you in trouble. See? You're, you're in the clear. You won't get in trouble. Not from helping me, I promise. 
I held on listening to the faint hum of the speakers above me, waiting and hoping whoever this was would help me somehow. I could feel the anxiety building within me at the weight of their response. The speaker murmured back to me. Turn around and go through the other hallway, then take a right at the very end. What's down there? What am I looking for? Will this, will this get me out of here? The panic in my voice hung thick in the air as a sharp silence befell the room once again. I walked down the hallway as instructed. There was something off about the lighting. And just as she said, I took the right at the end and waited. I checked for more speakers, but didn't see any. Hello? Are you still there? What's next? Where do I go from here? Nothing. Again, this unnecessary silence. Just tell me what I'm looking for already. I marched back the way I came to the same central room. Um, excuse me? What's the next step? Where do I go now? The speaker came to life immediately this time. There are only speakers in rooms, not hallways. You have to get from one room to the next on your own. Then I'll help you from there as best I can. Understood? I nodded. Okay. Back down the hall and to the left. Right. To the right. Yes. Right. Okay. Got it. We continued this pattern for a little while. I'd make it to another empty room, and she'd direct me one way that led to another room, and then another after that. I was starting to get exasperated with her. This was taking too long, and I was no closer to finding my way out. Okay, I I have to stop. What? What's your name? I'm Elise. Yes, Elise, I know who you are. You can call me M. Em, I'm not trying to be difficult here, but this is taking too long. I have no idea where I am, and I don't feel any closer to making my way out of here. Why don't you try taking the next right down this corridor? I'm almost positive that's the way to help you. I rolled up my sleeves and adjusted the laces of my chucks before heading down the long hallway. Everything looks exactly the same. Empty rooms followed by bare, unlit hallways one connected to the next in an endless maze of unused office space. As I started to near the light at the end of the hallway, I caught a glimpse of something that filled me with absolute dread. Then I heard M in the hallway. But I didn't hear her, not from the speakers. It was almost like she implanted the mic inside my head. My pace quickened to a jog down the hall, and I burst into the light of the room with one single chair sat in the center, facing the corner. Em's voice crackled in stereo from the speakers and from my mind. See? Now you know where you are. Author's note. So, uh, I tend to find inspiration in prompts. I like visuals, I like written prompts, all of the above. I I like getting a little hook to build my own story off of. And this actually came from one of those silly Instagram reels that's like, what's your birth month horror story kind of thing. Um, And the image was just a single chair in a very stark room. And I just came up with this idea of either some kind of experiment or supernatural thing. I I don't know necessarily where this was going, merely that poor Elise has probably been here a lot longer than you think. Hope you enjoyed. This chapter of Bite Size Tales has been brought to you under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. Intro and outro music is Fantasy Motion by Alexander Nakarada, provided under a Creative Commons 4.0 license. 
If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, we greatly appreciate reviews and recommendations to your friends. For more information about our authors, please visit bitesizetales.com. We look forward to reading to you next time.